I'm winemaker Amy LaBelle, and along with my husband, Cesar Arboleda, we offer you this behind the scenes sneak peek at what it's like to bring a big dream to life. A dream that took us 4,083 days to realize. Here, you'll see how we run a busy restaurant, farm and vineyard, event center, winery and tasting room, and how we produce the winemaker's kitchen culinary products all while raising our two young sons. Everybody has dreams, and we hope this show inspires you and your family to create happiness, cook together, live healthy, and most of all, dream big. <laughs> all right, let's go see what Amy's doing at the farmhouse. everybody. I'm over here across from the winery on the 50 acres of land that we bought for our expansion uh, that will be called the Farmhouse Marketplace. The Farmhouse Marketplace will have in it uh, as a centerpiece a distillery with a beautiful still and we'll be making all the fun things you know bourbons, whiskeys, rye, vodka, rum, gin and I'm excited to get that project started. Here up in the front will be a tavern to serve the community with excellent food around a big old fireplace. I can't wait to get that going. Behind the tavern will be a market where you can get fresh and prepared foods and all kinds of fun things to enjoy at home. And of course, wine and spirits as well. And then behind the market will be a little more event space for a community to enjoy with social gatherings. Uh, we'll be doing concerts there, educational events, all of the wonderful events that you've come to expect from LaBelle Winery. So I've got to get this project going. It's been delayed for three or four years now. We first had a little legal issue that we've since resolved. So I'm happy to be past that problem. Um, now we're in this global crisis, which is why we're securing the barn with a little bit of extra security today. Uh, we've got this pandemic that's put a halt to business for now, and that's okay. We know we'll all be together celebrating again soon and I'll be excited to get this project going at that time. So come on, take a walk and I can show you another piece of the project that we're thrilled about. This old house has been in the community for over 150 years. Uh, this was the centerpiece of this farm. This was a working farm. It had uh, all aspects of farming working really, but we're gonna be able to save this house. And that's a, a favorite part of this project for me. We're going to be able to turn it into an inn and cottage that will house four or five bedrooms as it shakes out. You'll be able to come to LaBelle or the Farmhouse Marketplace or the Farmhouse Distilling Company. Enjoy your time here, come to a party, stay overnight, and really take advantage of everything this property has to offer from the vineyards to the walking trails and everything in between. So we can't wait to host you here and save this house, make this property beautiful for our community, and get LaBelle's expansion underway. Right now we're working in the vineyard at LaBelle. We've done most of the pruning, and at this point what we need to do is tie down the two fruiting canes for the year. And the, boy, the boys are come, have come to help us today because, you know, we're in the middle of this virus and we finished all our schoolwork today. So we're doing a little family activity in the vineyard today. They're going to help us pick up some of the sticks from the pruning, uh, as well as to fix some of the netting. And then um, we'll get some of those vines tied down to the wires that allows us to have a really great crop this year. Um, we'll be doing the other three vineyards as well. This is our warmest vineyard because it's the highest. Um, you know, warm air rises, cold air sinks. Um, this vineyard's consistently about two to three degrees uh, warmer than the vineyards that are down below, which we'll get to a little later in the week. As the weather starts to warm up, I like to transition to white sangrias. I think they're really beautiful in the pitcher um, because you get to, especially if you have a clear glass pitcher, you get to see all the fruit kind of floating around in there. And so I wanted to share with you my simple, easy recipe for sangria. Everybody's sangria is different. You can use um, whatever fruit you have on hand. You can even use frozen fruit if that's all you happen to have. 
Um, really, it's just up to your taste, but uh, in these times with the virus and the pandemic, we certainly are just grateful for whatever fruit we have in the house. So here's what I'm gonna use today. I like to macerate the fruit for a couple of hours before I add the wine on top. So early in the day, and I don't do this overnight because of the um, citrus fruit that I'm using. You know, the rind in the citrus is gonna give you a really bitter flavor if you leave it overnight. So I like to do this day of, just a couple hours before, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna wanna enjoy it. So I start with some sugar. If you prefer, you can use simple syrup, which is just half and half sugar to water with the sugar melted. But in this case, since we're gonna macerate it, the sugar's gonna have plenty of time to melt. For this recipe, I'm gonna use um, Cointreau, which is an orange flavored liqueur. You can use Grand Marnier or Triple Sec or Brandy, which is much more traditional. Um, but I've got about six ounces of Cointreau. And we're gonna pour that in. And then we start adding our fruits. We're just building a base of flavor here. I've got some apples and peaches, so kind of stone fruit or tree fruit varieties. I'm gonna do a few of those. I've got some strawberries, which you can put in. I'll just caution you that when you use strawberries, the uh, color in strawberries is water soluble. So it, they tend to bleach out and get whiter as the day goes on. So if you don't mind that, that's fine. They'll, they'll give you a little bit of a rose color in your sangria, which is fine. But certainly not if you're gonna uh, try to have your sangria the following day, they'll all be white. And then we're gonna do some citrus fruit. I like to do lemons. I've got tangerine today, because that's what I have on hand. If you had blood oranges, that would be absolutely beautiful. Um, oranges are certainly wonderful. Some limes for some green color. What I go for in my sangria is I try to add all the colors of the rainbow if I have them. So if I had purple grapes, that would be amazing too. Or maybe a little bit more. So all right, you can see you've got in the bottom of this picture a bunch of fruit. We now have um, sugar and we have brandy or triple sec or Cointreau, some kind of liqueur that you enjoy. Stir that in and I would let that sit for about two hours. Then I would add about eh, maybe four ounces of orange juice and let that um, sit. And just before you're ready to serve it, uh, you can choose, uh, choose your wine. Now at this point, if you have only red wine on hand, go ahead and add that. Um, sangria was developed in Spain, which is why it's based in red wine. And you know, for hundreds of years, they've made different kind of Spanish sangrias uh, all over the world. Apparently the first time we had it here in the United States was in 1964 at the World's Fair, where it was introduced in the Spanish section of the World's Fair uh, tent grounds. And I think that's such a fun fact because it really took off in America. Sangria is a favorite drink at restaurants all over the country. People enjoy it uh, chilled with ice in the summer especially. I like the red one a little more in the winter, but I think this is gonna be perfect for our spring celebration. Just pour your um, wine over the top in a pitcher. You know, this is also a really great uh, drink to have. And I know we're not having a lot of people over now because of the pandemic, but if you're having a party, and when we get back to parties, when we will, this is a wonderful thing to make because you can set a pitcher of sangria out with some garnished glassware, and then you can enjoy your party. You don't have to be mixing drinks. Everybody knows this is the go-to drink for that party, and you don't have to be running back and forth to the bar making drinks for all your guests. People can self-serve and enjoy. And just before you're gonna serve, you're going to want to Pop this up with some club soda or seltzer water, whatever you have on hand. I happen to have a lime seltzer water on hand, which is perfectly fine. Um, I think any, any fruit flavored or, or neutral seltzer water is just fine. And then you give a stir and look how absolutely beautiful this is. I hope you enjoy this with your friends and family and that you feel comfortable making sangria because it's so easy and I know you're just gonna love it. We'll see you soon.